or someone. This effort to belong is actually a fundamental need that we have as humans. So Abraham Maslow, in his hierarchy of needs, labels love and belonging above physiological need and safety and security. When our need for belonging is met, we feel happy and satisfied. But when it's not met, we feel anxious, lonely, and jealous. And our effort to belong is particularly important in schools. So there exists this construct called school belonging. And it has a lot of different names, which you can see on the left, and related components on the right, including academic engagement, comfort at school, and feelings of worthiness academically and socially. So for my study, I had three research questions that I was particularly interested in. First, I wondered whether Latinx students experienced lower belonging than other students. I read a lot of previous literature that found that students who identified as minorities experienced lower belonging than other students. So that included urban students compared to uh, rural students, or Latinx students, or racial minorities. Um, and I wondered whether Latinx students experienced lower belonging than other students, because there wasn't much research done on this specific population. Secondly, I wondered how school belonging was related to academic achievement, motivation, and self-esteem. Because there is a lot of literature that finds that these are related, but I wondered whether it held for the population that I was curious about. For the population that I studied, I looked at a vocational technical high school, so I wondered whether the correlations would hold for students at a vocational school compared to a traditional high school, because the previous research mostly occurred in traditional high schools. So there are a lot of different predictors of self-esteem, but the three that I was primarily interested in were motivation, ethnicity, and self-esteem. Motivation to achieve is especially important in schools because students are trying to compete with one another academically while also trying to fit in socially. So I expected that students would better feel like they, students would be more motivated if they better felt like they belonged in school. Secondly, I predicted that ethnicity would have an effect on school belonging. So as you can see in this graph, Hispanic and Latinx students, even though the rate of dropout has steadily declined over the past 20 years, are still at the highest risk for dropout in high school. So I wonder whether school belonging had an effect and whether perhaps, you know, maybe, maybe students felt like they didn't belong in school because of their relationship with their teachers or because of their ethnic minority status. And so I wondered whether school belonging was related in some way. I also read a study that found a strong correlation between belonging and motivation specifically among Latinx students. So I wondered how this would hold. And thirdly, I imagined that self-esteem would have, would predict school belonging as well, because the more we feel like we belong, the better we feel about ourselves. So here's what we know in terms of predictions. We know that motivation to achieve is related to school success. We know that self-esteem, when we, when we feel better about ourselves, we, when we feel like we belong, we feel better about ourselves, and I know that motivation and belonging are related specifically among Latinx students. We also know quite a bit about some of the outcomes of an increase in school belonging. So that is some of the causes. And researchers Walton and Cohen developed an intervention to try and increase school belonging among African American adolescents. And they found that over the course of three years, students who participated in the intervention had their GPAs increased so much that after these three years, you can see the, the African American students who participated in the intervention are these black X's, and the European American students in the control group are the gray squares. And you can see that over the course of three years, the achievement gap was reduced to zero. Researchers also found a decline in absenteeism and improved subjective happiness. But what we still don't know is whether these same outcomes will hold for students who identify in a different minority as Latinx, or for students in a vocational school context. So, I had three hypotheses. First, I expected that ethnicity would predict belonging, such that Latinx students would experience lower belonging than their white peers. Secondly, I predicted that self-esteem would moderate the relation between school belonging and academic success. So, for people with high self-esteem, they Students who had higher self-esteem would better feel like they belonged, even if their academics weren't great. 
And thirdly, I expected that motivation to achieve would mediate the relation between school belonging and academic achievement. So students who felt like they belonged in school would be more motivated to do well and therefore would do better in school. So I conducted my survey in Lawrence, Massachusetts, which is a population that has about an 80% uh, Latinx population, um, which is mostly Dominican. And I had a sample size of 98 students. The mean age was around 16.4, and the GPA was 3.17. I was able to obtain opt-out consent because the survey was not unlike anything that students would otherwise do in school. And so I had teachers administer a 30-minute survey to their students, where the students completed measures of belonging and other related concepts. To measure academic achievement, I had students report their GPA, how many hours of homework they had per night, how they perceived it, how much they were interested in their work, and how well they perceived the quality of their work. So what did I find? To test my first result, to test my first hypothesis, I ran a one-way ANOVA and found that belonging did not vary by ethnicity, which did not support my first hypothesis. And it is inconsistent with the previous literature that suggests that minority students experience lower belonging than other students. However, this makes sense in this context, because in Lawrence, Massachusetts, like I mentioned before, the minority of being a Latinx student is the majority. Is the majority. So maybe the national feelings of belonging that perhaps as a minority you feel like you don't belong in the school setting if your teacher is white or for some other reasons, maybe these national feelings of belonging aren't as applicable in this particular context. I also wonder, because it's a vocational school where students spend one week in learning a shop and then a shop trade and then another week in the traditional high school curriculum, whether students felt more like they had a sense of belonging to their shop as opposed to their ethnic. I ran a mediation model to test this hypothesis, and I used uh, interest in material as a measure of academic achievement. And I did indeed find a moderation of self-esteem on the relation between school belonging and interest in material. But it wasn't at all what I would have expected. So I would have expected that for students with high self-esteem, the more they feel like they belong, the more interested they would report that they were in the material, which would indicate a positive slope. But here you see that the slope is negative. So for students with high self-esteem, the more they felt like they belonged, the less interested they were in the material. Now, this doesn't follow any of the previous literature on school belonging or on self-esteem, and really rejects my, my initial hypothesis. So I came up with a couple of plausible explanations for this finding. First of all, I wondered whether academic identity and social identity weren't quite as intertwined as I would have thought. So maybe students felt like they belonged in school socially, and they felt like they were really cool, and being interested in the material wasn't cool, so they reported that they were less interested in the material because that was different from their academic, their identity, academically was different than their identity socially. I also wonder if interest in material was an effective measure of academic output. So maybe students were saying that they were less interested in the material, but really they were getting better grades. We don't know. <laughs> um, and finally, I ran a process model to test this mediation, and I did not find a significant mediation for motivation to achieve on the relation between school belonging and academic achievement. However, I did find a significant mediation model when I used self-esteem as the outcome variable. So, Students who better felt like they belonged in school were more motivated to do well. And then maybe the students who were more motivated to do well were more proud of the work that they presented and therefore felt better about themselves. But this mediation model also held for self-esteem as the mediator and school belonging as the mediator. So it's clear that there is a really significant relation between these three variables, and we need more research to better understand how they play. So one of the major implications for this study is, do these correlations even hold for this population? So the result that I found goes against all the previous literature on school belonging and on self-esteem, but maybe it doesn't hold for students in a vocational school context that are not expecting to go to college and maybe don't have the same ideologies around academics. And 
maybe it was too close. So this is important to psychology to understand that maybe we don't quite understand the concepts as well as we might have thought. And we can't necessarily generalize our findings until we test every specific subgroup. Some future direction should be um, longitudinal intervention to measure how um, belonging increases over time, and perhaps a, an experimental design to compare vocational students to traditional high school students, because a lot of my speculations are about the vocational school nature. So I wonder if perhaps a future study could compare the two to see whether my speculations one of the biggest limitations, I think, of my study was the measure of self-esteem that I used. So the measure of self-esteem that I used was a measure of academic self-esteem because I wanted to see how students related their, how students thought of themselves within an academic context. But there has not been a ton of research using this academic measure of self-esteem. And rather, there's much more on like the Rosenberg self-esteem scale, for example, which measures social and emotional self-esteem as well as academic self-esteem. So maybe if I had used a more replicable, valid, widely used measure of self-esteem, I might have obtained results that better reflected the previous literature. And finally, I'd like to acknowledge that I am not a Latina woman, I did not grow up in Lawrence, Massachusetts, and I did not attend a vocational high school. So while I have done a lot of research to try and better understand the experiences of these students, I won't ever truly understand the cultural nuances that they face. And to conclude, I'd like to thank the Hamilton College Psychology Department, my thesis advisor, Rachel White, my thesis group, Grace and Ben, as well as the Greater Lawrence Technical School Director, Elizabeth Bennett, for whom this study would not have been possible without. Thanks.
Yeah, because the one thing I was thinking about during your study is that, like, biracial individuals can choose to yeah. try to identify more with yeah. white people, but yeah. at the end of the day, like, white people are never going to yeah. see biracial people as white, whereas yeah. black people, That's even if it's like, ask. okay, you're not, like, oh, fully black, I just your but question. people, like, black people will oh, okay. accept that. Like, when people, people, people look at me, I'm biracial. They don't think I'm white. And yeah. even if yeah. I try to be white, well, I'm they think you're half white. white. Exactly. But white people are not going to be like, Kira, <laughs> yeah, join like, us! Whether I, I can act as white as I want. But yeah, like, I'll never in, in, oh, I actually didn't have time to talk about it, but I talk about, like, you know, time, so, like, yeah. like and passing as yeah. white or black. But it was really <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Thank you, Jackie. Oh. Is that someone's camera? That's this is not my favorite. It's gonna be me like looking into it at the end. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> Actually, whose camera is that though? Oh, that is.